If you're someone that actually cares about your overall health, then you need to be doing routine blood testing. And that includes a range of blood tests that I would deem as incredibly important to gauge and analyze where you're at in terms of your overall health. So first of all, what I wanna start out with is a particular blood test marker called high sensitivity C-reactive protein or HSCRP. This is the inflammation marker. Now specifically HSCRP is a highly sensitive marker of chronic inflammation and also cardiovascular risk. Now here's why it matters because elevated HSCRP levels are linked to heart disease, autoimmune conditions and metabolic dysfunction. Even low-grade inflammation can accelerate aging and increase disease risk. Now, the optimal reference range should be less than one milligram per mil. The moderate risk is between one to three, and above three is considered high risk and requires further investigation. There are many things that can lower HSCRP. Uh, glutathione is one such substance that can be IV or liposomal, high-dose vitamin C, uh, turmeric, taurine, glycine, magnesium, a lot of these can actually lower CRP levels. Next up, we have RBC zinc, so the bioavailable zinc test. This measures zinc inside red blood cells, giving a more accurate reflection of long-term zinc status than serum zinc. This is crucial for immunity, brain function, testosterone production, and wound healing. Deficiency can lead to poor immunity, fatigue, hair loss, and lower testosterone levels. The optimal range is between 5.0 to 7.5 milligram per liter. This varies by laboratory. If you're someone that's been trialing different supplements and you're still lacking that energy, spark, drive, and overall vitality, then you may want to check out my brand new supplement that I've just released called Katwa Pure. Katwa Pure harnesses the power of a particular Amazonian herb known as Katwaba bark, which has been used for centuries to boost mood, enhance energy levels, and act as an aphrodisiac. So definitely check out Katwa Pure. You can learn more by visiting inbeforesups.com. Following, we have free T4, the inactive thyroid hormone. This measures the inactive form of thyroid hormone that gets converted to T3, the active form. Low T4 can indicate hypothyroidism, which causes fatigue, weight gain, cold intolerance, and sluggish metabolism. If T4 is normal, but T3 is low, conversion issues like stress, poor liver function or nutrient deficiencies may be at play, which is why it's essential to measure both. Optimal range is between 0.8 to 1.8 nanogram per deciliter. Next up, we have free T3, the active thyroid hormone. Now, many guys that I've consulted over the years, specifically guys that come to me with their blood test results and they want me to build out a personalized protocol, a lot of these guys actually have low free T3. Now, this is the active form of thyroid hormone that's responsible for metabolism, energy, and fat loss. There's a strong link between free T3 and testosterone and also DHT. The higher the free T3, usually that also correlates with higher free testosterone and also DHT. So low T3 can lead to brain fog, fatigue, weight gain, cold extremities, even if T4 is normal. Now, chronic stress, fasting, or low carbohydrate diets can actually impair T4 to T3 conversion, leading to sluggish metabolism. So the optimal reference range is anywhere between 3.5 to 4.2 picograms per mil. Now, obviously, I prefer most men to be on the higher end of this reference range, sometimes even potentially over the reference range. Next up, we have prolactin. Prolactin is the hidden hormone that lowers testosterone. This is a hormone produced by the pituitary gland, which affects testosterone, dopamine, and libido. High prolactin can suppress testosterone, lower libido, and even cause erectile dysfunction in men. Elevated levels may indicate dopamine deficiency, stress, or pituitary tumors, also known as prolactinomas. Optimal range for men is between 4 to 15 nanogram per milliliter and 4 to 23 nanogram per milliliter for women. Next up, we have homocysteine. This is the cardiovascular and brain health marker. This measures toxic amino acid linked to heart disease, stroke, and cognitive decline. High homocysteine levels can damage blood vessels and increase heart attack risk. It can indicate poor methylation due to B vitamin deficiencies like B6, B9, and B12. 
ideal optimal range is below 7 micromole per liter, and above 15 micromole per liter means high risk and requires intervention. Next, we have free testosterone. Now, the hormone that actually drives performance. Free testosterone, obviously, it is more important than total testosterone, but that does not mean that total testosterone is not important. They're both important, but free testosterone gives me an idea of how much of the actual testosterone is active in the human body. Now, ideally, we want men to be on the upper end of the reference range, usually around 15 to 21 picograms per mil. And so realistically, we want that to be a particular score that they're hovering around year round and ideally at the top end of that reference range. So most guys can actually f still feel really average if they've got f high free testosterone and low DHT. And they might also have issues if their estrogen is either too high or too low. So this is really critical to understand. These are the critical blood tests that I want most guys to be performing at least once or twice per year to get a good idea on their overall health um, and to also assess and analyze whether or not the supplements that they're using and peptides and drugs are actually having, imp having an impact on their overall health and vitality. So what are your thoughts on this? Leave a comment down below. Let's get a discussion going.